guys, welcome to the episode in the React Foundation series. In this episode right here, I'm going to be talking to you guys about application structure for React. So in the previous episode, we left off where we got our Hello World app running. Uh, I know the background was yellow and all that stuff, but I've done something here that I think you guys are going to like. So what I've done here is created a base project. As you can see here, I've called it invoiced uh, hyphen UI. Uh, so what we're going to be building is a CRM application where uh, we can create contacts and you know our contacts we can be invoiced. We can create invoice for them. Um, so we're going to do that using React. Um, and later on, we're going to create the back end to go with it as well so we can save and sync our data back to the database. The point of this uh, you know folder structure is that so you guys have a good starting point. And so... Um, what this is going to do is you guys, if you guys clone this or fork this, you'll be able to follow along with what I do uh, moving forward. Um, so basically, um, you know, what we want to focus on here is if you guys clone this project here and do an NPM install and do an NPM start, you'll be able to come to this point over here. And, uh, you know, in the previous episode, we created a React component in a flat folder structure where there was an entry file. Um, but now, as you can see, the structure is a little bit different now. Um, you know, things are a little bit more complicated. And so uh, what we're going to be doing now is basically, um, you know, we're going to have a real structure to our application because as we code the different parts of our app, things are going to get more complicated as we go along. And, uh, you know, we need some kind of standard, we need some kind of structure to keep everything coherent and, you know, maintainable, uh, essentially. So uh, this is the, the structure that I've uh, created. You know, I looked at around and saw what other people were doing, and I decided that you know I, this is something that seems to work. Uh, so I'm gonna follow this, and then uh, you know when we work with React and Webpack and all that stuff, uh, you know you kind of have to throw a lot of the stuff you know out the window. Um, and now we have you know like JavaScript is a first class citizen, so you know we need to have some kind of structure for it. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the structure where, you know, so now as you can see, I have an app folder here and we have components and then in the components we have the index. So the index is always going to be the base uh, folder, uh, the base file. Um, you know, for example, if I take a look at, um, you know, the webpack config over here, you'll see that the entry is actually app. Uh, app is actually referencing the app folder, as you can see here. And inside the app folder, there's an index.js. So uh, without even you know writing uh, slash index.js, it's inferring that, okay, well, I'm going to look for the index file over here. That's why this configuration actually works. Um, so if we reference a folder inside, it's going to look for index.js first. That's going to be the base file. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's changed from the previous episode. I've got over here an extract text plugin, and that's because I want to use um, I want to make sure that we know we have a separate CSS. Uh, traditionally, Webpack builds everything and uses inline CSS. It puts the style block inline into your HTML, and I don't want that. So what I've had to do is use the Extract Text plugin for Webpack. And uh, as you can see here, I'm using it in our Webpack configuration. Um, you'll see it referenced here as well. So basically, um, you know, I just followed the tutorial on the Webpack site. So if you're wondering how all this came to be, check the tutorial. It's all there. All right. So uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is, you know, this index file over here. Um, actually, no, we're going to talk about linting. So if, if I head over here, you'll see that I've got a configuration for linting over here. And so what is linting? Linting allows us to write clean JavaScript code because the sublime text is going to um, basically check our JavaScript as we're writing it. So for example here, if I don't follow the convention, I do something like this and I do a return, it's going to give me an error and says, hey, you know, you got to add, it's not an error, I mean, the, your code will still run. But to keep things clean and consistent, like for, for example, if I don't put a semicolon over here, it's going to complain, it's going to tell me that I need to put a semicolon um, to keep things clean, I need to add a space after my return over here. Um, so this linting is going to... Uh, keep things very, very clean. Uh, and I've configured it all in our project directory over here for us so, so that moving forward, we are able to write clean code and it's gonna show all those, um, you know, those red dots if you don't follow the convention. All right, so what we're gonna do here in this episode after all that is basically I'm gonna refactor this uh, component here to follow what I was, uh, you know, what I would 
thing is more clean. So what I'm going to have here is um, a component called layout. Uh, so I'm going to create a new file in here called layout.js. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, I'm just going to copy all of this uh, and paste it here. I'm going to change this to layout and this to layout as well. So this is going to be our component. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is going to do an export uh, layout from and then dot slash layout. If I can type. All right, so what we're going to do next, uh, so is, is it now going to give uh, us error? Like that's because we don't have a new line. So if you are wondering where all this error is coming from, it's you can check the bottom down here. So it says that uh, required at the end of file but not found. So what we have to do to fix this is just add an enter. So now it'll keep things clean. So, um, so basically now we have a component called layout. So I'm going to call the ID layout as well, just like that. Uh, and then basically what we're going to use uh, this layout as is it's just going to basically be, uh, you know, the kind of like the layout of our entire application. We're going to use this. We're going to fill everything out in here. We're going to start off being simple uh, and then we're going to, you know, migrate over and create deeper nested folder structure later on. But for now, let's keep it simple. Uh, I want to, you know, us to understand the convention of the structure that I'm going to be using moving forward. Um, so once we have that, we do the export over here. The next thing is here, we're going to do an export like this. So uh, layout, and then uh, we're going to just export, yeah, the components. And so now uh, all we have to do is change this over to layout, just like that. And then um, automatically, you know, it'll export that layout component, and then now we'll have access to it here. So now if we head back to our browser, um, you know, all I did here was just rename a few things, move things around. Everything still works as you can see. Uh, so what we can actually even do is just call like hello uh, from layout. And then if we do a reload over here, you'll see that it changed. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be the structure that we're going to use. Uh, and uh, the next episode, what we're going to be doing is we need some kind of CSS framework because I don't want to write the CSS from scratch, like you need know, to make it cross browser compatible. Uh, so in the next episode, I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, a, a CSS library that we're going to include into a project. Uh, so we have a starting point for, you know, like building our application. Um, so, and you also see how we can include external libraries. Like, you know, if you're using bootstrap, for example, um, how to add that into here. Uh, so yeah, uh, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys found that useful. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, check out our website as well. We've got a member section. Some of the uh, you know future episodes on React are going to be for our members only. So be sure to uh, you know sign up to be a member. It's only nine dollars a month, uh, and you know that's what's going to keep the lights on. That's what what's going to keep me recording these videos for you guys. Um, so. Check that out and I'll see you guys in the next one.